Hello and welcome to Ivory Bless Roses. My name is Lisa. Mushu and I are here today to do another Rick Rack video. Today we're going to try a number of different stitches. I hope you'll enjoy coming along with me. Let's review supplies really quickly. I have my Valdani thread. I'm using a size 12 in a colorway that I really like. I'm using Bohen Cruel Embroidery Needles, size 7. I have my little scissors. I have my thimble just in case I need it. I already have my strips of rickrack basted onto my sampler strip, and I just used a little bit of invisible basting. That's just holding it in place so I don't have to mess with pins while I'm stitching. Now today we're going to do five different stitches. In those, we're going to do a couple of versions of pistol stitch, and then we're going to explore chevron stitch and a sheaf stitch. I already have several needles threaded up with thread. I've been trying to use the leftover lengths of some of these. Let's start with a very simple pistol stitch. We did French knots already, and pistol stitch is really a variation on a French knot. On this one, what we're going to do is come up in the base of the arch. We're going to come straight up, and then we're going to make our French knot. I remember liking two wraps in this thread best. And we're going to make that right at the top of the arch. So we end up with this just simple little straight stitch with a French knot on the end of it. I use this one all the time for flowers that makes beautiful stamens. Let's try three wraps on this since the French knot is sitting off of the rickrack. And truthfully, I can't tell much difference, so we're going to go with three. And I'm just trying to come up right in the center and go down right at the top of the arch in the center. So I think this one's going to go pretty quickly. This just makes a fun, simple stitch with a little bit of additional interest to it rather than doing just a plain straight stitch. And depending on the thread you're using, you could have a different appearance as well. And I realize that one of the things I'm not necessarily paying enough attention to is getting my stitches nice and straight so they're all a little bit uneven. But you know what? That's going to be okay. So there we have a plain pistol stitch on the peak of each arch. Now we're going to do another pistol stitch, and it's going to be very similar. We're going to start off exactly the same way, but instead of just doing one, we're going to do a group of three. And this is one I really like. I often use these as the stamens of flowers. Yeah, I really like that one. Like I did when we did the straight stitch fans, I always do the center one first. It sort of gives me my establishing thread, and I got that one a little loose, but that's okay too. When you're doing stamens on flowers, that actually makes it look a little bit more natural. And like we did with the straight stitch fans, you could alternate it going back and forth. I'm not going to do that on this piece. But I did want to show the variations of how the three stitches would look. I'd like to continue these exploratory stitching videos. Let me know in the comment section below if there is a stitch you would like to explore. And we could look at that in some of these. So let me know in the comments below if you have something that you're interested in pursuing and exploring.
and I'd love to know if you're stitching along with me on these samplers. Are you trying to make your own Rick Rack sampler? I like the way the variegated thread is showing up in this one. You can see it traveling from light to dark, and I think that's about as far as I can get with this thread here. I think these were both leftovers from others that we've done. And there we go. There's a whole row of pistol stitch, and I'll call them trefoils because they have three stalks on them. And I really like that one. I mean, that one to me is a good standalone stitch. You almost wouldn't need any other embellishment than that. For the next one, I want to use a chevron stitch. This is a pretty standard crazy quilting stitch that we often do. It's not dissimilar from the herringbone. There are a lot of ways you could do it. You could do it so that you put the little caps for the stitch at the top and bottom of the rickrack, or you could put it on the inside. And I'm going to try it with the inside first, and then we'll try it with the cap on top, because I think it's going to give two very different appearances. For this one, so I can make it look even on both ends, I'm going to start up here. I want the cap on this one to be outside of where the rickrack begins and ends. So I'm coming diagonally across, and then I'm taking a little back stitch and going back, and I'm going to come right back up where I came down. And then we're going to go up across, looking at the center of that. And again, I want to be a little bit above. And so the size of this is going to depend just a little bit on the size of your rickrack. And we're just going to go back and forth. Put a little cap on it. Because of the size of my rickrack, the overall cap is probably about, about an eighth of an inch long. So I'm stitching out about half of that. And coming back and stitching the same. Looks like I was getting a little long there, so I readjusted. And this is another one of those stitches that I mean, you can add so many things to this, and yet it looks very good by itself. I really like chevron stitch, and it's been one that I have used a lot in my crazy quilts, although I have not done a lot of it with rickrack. And I love using these little caps as the foundation for other types of embellishments on it, sitting little flowers or beads on top of those caps or on the bottom of them, depending on where they're at. And I'm right-handed, so I work this stitch much easier going from left to right, but if I was left-handed, I would probably do it from right to left. Do it the way it seems to flow most easily to you. I like having my hand underneath where I'm going down. The frame is kind of keeping me from being able to do that. There we go. And then one last one over here, and I could add my little half cap if I want. 
So there's chevron stitch done to hold the rickrack in place by going over it in the valleys. Now let's do it so that it sits on the peak. I'm just going to start outside here and I'm going to go right at the top. This one will sit on top of the rickrack rather than crossing over it in the same way that the other one did. So same stitch, similar appearance, but totally different impact. This needle feels like it's got a little burr on it. I can feel it against my fingertip. So let's take a brief aside. This is my Hasif where I keep some of my stitching tools in it. And one of the things I have here is an emery strawberry that I made. Now this is all filled with emery. Because I'm already threaded, I'm not going to push it all the way through like you really should. But I'm going to kind of go in and out and see if I can get rid of that burr. And I usually squeeze the emery nice and tight when I do that. I want that pressure around the needle. Oh, and that feels so much better. It just smooths out that little rough spot that I could feel with my fingertip when I was stitching. And that might actually help my thread to go through a little easier. Oh yeah, so much easier. And I'm trying to keep my thread out of the way because that will help me stitch it without getting tangled up. But you can see the difference how it goes over it and it just has a completely different look even though it's exactly the same stitch. And I can see where Mushu has been sitting on this project. For some reason he's decided that's his new favorite place to sleep and he's been stretching the fabric out so we may need to restretch this before I do another seam. Every time I come in to stitch on this, he comes in before me and sits right on top of it. And you know, this is one of those stitches I can do either direction. So I'm going to do it. And I'm going backwards, so I'm, my caps I'm going to still stitch the same way, just because that's easier for me. I was going to end up looking more like a herringbone the way I was stitching that. So herringbone done two different ways, and I'm really happy with that one. I like them both, and I can see using both of them as I go. I think it really emphasizes the pattern of the rickrack on this one, where this one maybe hides it a little more. I'm not sure. Anyway, that one's a lot of fun. The next stitch we're going to do is called a sheaf stitch. Now this is one that I often have had trouble with. I always need to mark it because otherwise I tend to get it pretty uneven. This time I don't need to mark it because I'm going to use the rickrack as my guideline. So I know when I do this I want to go across each one of these diagonals all going in the same direction. Now this rickrack isn't big enough but I suppose you could alter them if you wanted and that could give a completely different appearance. So I'm going to come up just about straight in between the two points on the rickrack. And like other stitches, I'm going to do the middle one first, and I'm going to come straight down to about the center in between the ones on the bottom. And now I'm going to stitch the other side. I'm going to want to keep a straight line. We'll see how well I've done here. And so I want them evenly far apart. And so the one on the inside is going to be right up against the edge. 
but we're going to come out even with that. Then I'm going to come up right in the middle. I'm going to turn it for what makes it easier for me. And I'm going to go underneath an outside thread. And I'm going to come back under the outside thread and go down just on the other side of that middle stitch. And here's where the magic happens. It should pull them together and you get a nice little sheaf stitch. So we're going to keep going here. It doesn't really matter if you're starting top or bottom. I'm just trying to keep it nice and even. I do like to minimize my thread use by going next to the one I just came out of. And straight over and then up. I don't want to go through any of the threads that I've just stitched because I want to be able to pull them together. So under one, go around all of them and under the opposite outside one and down again near the center and pull it together. So this is one that I have not seen anybody else use. I think it's an excellent one. I think it really works lovely. Under the outside one, wrap around, go under the opposite outside one, and down near the center. And if you had big rickrack, you can have much bigger sheaves, so to speak. Trying to keep that line straight in the ends, and those stitches nice and parallel to one another. This is one that you can do with more stitches, like you can do a sheaf with five parallel stitches to one another. This rickrack three seemed like it was about the right number. Pretty happy with how this one is turning out. This is also one that I have found with past experience. I do a better job keeping my lines parallel if I use stab stitching where the needle is always going through perpendicular to the fabric rather than scoop stitching where it's going parallel to the fabric. And I'm finding it easier to pick up that outside stitch if I'm doing it from outside of the rickrack. here and pick it up up here. I've seen some interesting sheaf stitches where they've done all of the parallel stitches with one color thread and then come in with a different color thread for the wrapping. If that was the case you would just simply go and stitch all of these parallel stitches first and then you would come back and do the gathering stitch at the end with the other thread color. didn't follow my same pattern so that threw me a little bit here as I'm finishing this one off. There we are. Let me tie this one off. There are our five rickrack stitches for today. We have the single pistol stitch, the trefoil pistol stitch with done in groups of three. We have chevron that caps in the valleys and chevron that caps on the peaks. And then we have done the sheaf stitch. I really like all of those. They're all ones that I would use 
they offer so many possibilities. Let me know in the comment section below two things. One, what's another stitch you would like to explore in a similar way that we're exploring attaching rickrack? And two, which is your favorite stitch for today? I'd love to know. Until next time, happy stitching, and I'll see you in the next video.